Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed Zuri Hack so far. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, as is the tradition, we're going to end with the project presentations, um, which basically means that everyone, if they want, they will have a chance to present what they worked on during Zuri Hack. Um, it doesn't have to be something super impressive, like a GEC feature. Even if you did something really small, it's cool to see what, what people did. Uh, so definitely don't be shy. Um, so one option is you can come up here with your own laptop if you want to show like some code running or you want to show a terminal. Um, the other option to kind of like save uh, time switching laptops is that you send a link to some slides in, uh, in this channel. Uh, and that way we can kind of like switch, switch a bit faster. Um, so there is also no predetermined order. Um, so I would say we can start with Ryan if he's here. Thank you. Uh, so as a reminder, I was working on uh, GHC development, in particular working on improvements to things related to deriving in GHC. And I'm happy to report that we actually got some um, first-time GHC contributors to work on some bugs in deriving. So the things on... Oh, thank you. <laughs> the things on the left-hand side of the slide are, are things that have landed recently. Uh, the first one, I don't know if that really counts. That, that was a, a patch that I submitted, uh, but I included that for completeness. And then the bottom two are, are by um, first-time GAC contributors. And uh, they haven't landed yet, but they have been assigned to the MargeBot queue. Um, and that's uh, MargeBot's avatar. Uh, the, the things on the right are things that we attempted to work on but didn't finish, uh, mostly due to time or complexity constraints. Uh, the, the first one is something that I looked at and sort of diagnosed what was wrong but didn't have enough time to finish, so hopefully I'll get that done later. And then the thing at the bottom I looked at uh, with a, a first-time GEC contributor, we discovered it was actually a bit trickier to solve than we originally thought. So that one is, is not yet solved, and um, I, I think that one's still up for grabs, so I wouldn't say it's, it's quite as, as straightforward as some of these other bugs, but uh, I do think that someone who wants to get their hands um, into the sort of interesting parts of the type checker would be able to do that with some guidance. So I, I'd still say it's a, a newcomer bug, but maybe newcomer plus plus or something like this. Um, but yeah, the, that is everything I have to report on the deriving front. Uh, this was fantastic. Thanks, everyone. Next in the queue sort of thing, I have David. Uh, stand on this side of the... This side, yeah. Okay. I actually did very little work on this for the last two days because <laughs> I spent a lot of time talking to people. But uh, I, I guess I pitched it first, so I will uh, come and, and say how much progress was made by everybody who isn't me. They all deserve credit. But the project in question is the Haskell Error Index, which is a website which documents the error messages and warnings issued by whatever Haskell build tool wants to participate. So far, we have GHC and Cabal and Stack. Uh, no, not Cabal. We have GHC and GHC up in Stack. And I think Cabal install is likely to get it soon. It, like, they're interested, but just haven't gotten to it yet. And if you're doing a Haskell development tool and you would like to integrate, let me know, and it'd be great. The, it's a website where you can go and you type in the unique code that you got in your error message or warning that is stable across versions. And then you can click and see details. And we had a lot of great progress on this by, again, people who were not me. Uh, we had 15 uh, error messages and warnings in GHC that got documentation written, including examples and all sorts of great stuff, which I think is wonderful. Um, we got more examples added to documentation that already existed. Um, my one contribution was a minor CSS fix. I was very happy to get that done. And also, we have uh, server-side syntax highlighting rather than client-side, almost ready to merge. And that is paving the way for diffing the example programs in which the error has been fixed, which I think will be super valuable in the future. Um, that's what we got done. <laughs> Nicholas? Uh, 
Yes. Do we have a mouse? Yeah, okay, great. So uh, I had a little mini project that I just did like for one hour today approximately. In January, we had a Haskeller Z uh, meetup where I gave a little mini tutorial on just like a be beginner tutorial on how to use the Reddit API. And um, I did that because I was curious whether the Haskell jobs market is increasing, decreasing, stagnating, and so on. So the approach there was we were just scraping Reddit, like using the API. API in some ways, to just collect all postings that have anything to do with jobs, role, developer, whatever, and doing a, on the results, doing a manual review or to just to make sure that when somebody's talking about a job, they're not talking about a job queue or a role is not representational. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's have a quick look about on that here. So like I made this little repo about the Haskell job statistics. So if anybody ever does any kind of uh, analysis on something else that I don't know, Haskell.org or maybe in the future people don't use Reddit anymore or something else, we can just pass uh, post a new category in here. But uh, I just wanted to show you real quick uh, what the result was of this analysis. I'm just gonna open this in a new tab and there's a public Google sheet and you can see the results in here. So we started, or I started analyzing the jobs from 2008 all the way to 2020. So this year is not in yet. And this is the cumulative number of jobs over time. And down here you can see the per year statistics and you could see that uh, overall the number of Haskell jobs is increasing. In 2020 there was a significant dip probably due to COVID and you can also see that dip like in this kind of flat area over here. And um, yeah, I think in 2021, if you were looking for a Haskell job, you didn't have to do more than idle on Reddit uh, for a couple of days because there were around 100 job postings in the uh, year. So every three days, there would be a new Haskell job posting. And there's also some other interesting data in there. So for example, if you look at what kind of jobs were being offered uh, in here, <clears throat> at the beginning, it was just like very specific companies that were doing like larger things. So you could see like already like from 2008, like there isn't really that much in here, one job posting. And then um, over the next year, so for example, in the beginning, if you wanted to work in Haskell, you would have to work for one of the consultancies like well typed or uh, FP complete. So I'm just gonna uh, just uh, search this here just to demonstrate that. So you could see there were lots of FP complete job postings over here. Well, if you scroll all the way down, you can see that now the Haskell job ecosystem is really quite diverse. So you can see all kinds of random companies using Haskell for all kinds of things, which I think is a nice development overall. So um, there were often the questions like, uh, does, does Haskell decline, for example, like, or how's the job market? And I think the data shows quite clearly um, that the job market is going up. Of course, 100 jobs per year is still not very large, but it would suffice for the people in this room to uh, get a job if they want to. So yeah, that's kind of it. Thanks. Let's talk about Pledge first, and then we can do the two other presentations. Yeah, uh, yeah, nothing too impressive happened. Oh, sorry. Was it here? All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, Tomasz Janoszek and I, I think he already left, uh, we spent uh, most, of the, no, most of the time um, scratching our heads, um, trying to figure out some, some logic of how to pass around um, pledge promises, and we'd find some combinators, and then, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we got frustratingly stuck um, with uh, GHC not solving uh, uh, type constraints that we want, that we want. so uh, uh, yeah, help. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, there's a, t a tiny bit of progress, but, uh, but nothing, nothing really impressive, so. Uh, yeah, if you you know uh, if you if you if you know anything if you think you can uh, you know have uh, sage advice on how to how to write type constraints in a way that that can move us forward, uh, yeah, I'd love to talk to you. Um, I think we can do someone with their own laptop, maybe Dosh or the Katas. Yeah, as a
Hang on. Hey everyone, uh, I'm the author of this project called DOSH. What DOSH is, is a command line interface to Haskell, uh, kind of like GHCI, but on steroids, as you will soon see. Uh, this was a project that I pitched uh, with a few friends a few months ago at, uh, at Zurich Haskell Meetup. Uh, it's some, some of you hopefully remember. Uh, so during this hackathon, we didn't work on it all that much, but today we got it to a demoable stage for the first time, so you are going to be the first to see this exciting uh, project and hopefully get excited for it. Uh, disclaimer, it has, so this is the repo for it. Hopefully the, ah, the URL is hidden because I have too many uh, plugins. <laughs> um, I'll post it in the Discord. Uh, this readme is super, too uh, super too enthusiastic. It's not there yet. It barely work. It barely passes as a tech demo, uh, and this is where I need your help to help me get this thing in shape because I/O is hard. So uh, I have my friend uh, Tom here to help me type. Uh, actually, I'll type and yeah, you can talk I'll about. Explain. Okay, let's demo. All right. Okay. Yeah, so basically that's supposed to look more or less like iHaskell with, uh, with a few changes. So you can type normal Haskell code and... Is there a condition? Yeah, there are a few, a few technical details that need to be fixed. And by a few, I mean quite a few, but never mind. Um, <laughs> so impor importantly, normal Haskell expressions are... Like, this is all GHC, this is table stakes, GHCI stuff, right? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's cool. Is that good? Testing, testing, yeah. So the table stakes are expressions can be um, evaluated, and indeed the race condition uh, doesn't help. Uh, we have syntax highlighting. We also have real-time error reporting, which is done with HLS, which, you know, when you get this in the GHCI, uh, I can drop this project. Uh, yeah, so you want to maybe talk about the tips. Yeah, another feature would be probably multi-line editing, like a few. Um. Yeah, right. Anyone who has ever tried using GHCI was probably annoyed at the fact that you can't really do f nicely function definitions because you have to split them over multiple lines. So what, what is the Fibonacci? The, our favorite sequence is yeah, uh, Fibonacci, right? Uh, so let's implement Fibonacci. Mm. Uh, let, me let me see if I can remember how to do this. Wow. As you can see, the errors are very helpful because they keep popping up and down. <laughs> and that's ex but that's exactly what the beginner needs, you know. <laughs> okay, and we evaluate it, and there's no output, thank goodness. And uh, now if we call take 10 fibs, I can't type. Please God. Yes. And now the nice. No, we need no finances. And now the the real like kind of the nice thing is we see this and it is good. But maybe you're one of those people that thinks that Fibonacci starts with one one. So you can just go back, change it. Okay, it didn't reevaluate, right? Because this cell needs to be separately reevaluated, and that's it. That's Tosh. Thank you. That's the whole point, yes. Yes. And I'm using, and it's syntax highlighted using GHC. So it's like, also, also this works without relying on the GHC in the path. So in theory, it should be able to run on Windows. In practice, it doesn't because video, right, this is, a, this, is an FR, this is an FRP app, which is also cool. So it's like functional, reactive, and interactive, and all that. We have another question, yes. Is this intended to be an alternative to iHaskell? Yes, because the <laughs> because the Jupyter the Jupyter framework uh, I did I am aware of it and I read it I read the code and I stole some of it for this. Uh, however, um, not all of it like it's the, their design goals are not the same as mine. For example, they have no no desire for HLS integration and stuff like this. It's intended to be a demonstration of how we can make something better than Jupyter in in Haskell. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and also, uh, this is a terminal app, uh, um, which 
is obviously uh, awesome, but because we're using FRP, we can also relatively easily make, uh, let's say, electron wrapper with Reflex DOM. So I'm using Reflex VTY, but there's also Reflex DOM, which makes it a web app. So, you know, the sky is the limit. Uh, and we can make, like, clickable, uh, whatever. Uh, David has some cool ideas. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can have Nicholas and Andreas uh, next about the statically linked. All right, um, so a while ago, uh, I had worked uh, with others on uh, fully statically linked Haskell binaries built with uh, Nix and Bazel. Um, and uh, maybe first to start with a little bit of uh, motivation, by fully statically linked, we mean a binary that's uh, not linked against any, against any dynamic library, including glibc. Uh, and the idea behind this is that it makes it easier to deploy. You just have a binary artifact that you plop somewhere on a Linux machine and it runs. Uh, you don't have to worry about missing libraries, matching library versions, and so on. Um, so it's fully self-contained. Uh, the trouble there is glibc is not really meant to be used like that, so you have to use a different tool chain, like a muscle-based one. Um, and uh, in the specific case of how this is built with Bazel, uh, we need to load the static Haskell libraries into the GHC session for um, template Haskell, and so we need a static runtime system, so a statically built GHC itself as well, um, and some special GHC flags to make that possible. Um, and uh, since then, this uh, has been failing uh, with some libraries. So I should say this is something that we worked on with uh, Jonathan, who's not here anymore, and uh, Niklas and myself. Um, and um, since then, also some things updated in Nix packages. GHC was updated, so what we did this weekend was uh, look into the various corners of this to get this up to date again. Um, and so uh, this project is based on Niklas' static Haskell Nix. Um, and um, uh, yeah, maybe you want to first talk about that side of things, and then uh, I continue with the Basel thing. So this project you may have already seen a little bit in uh, past Zuri Hex. It's a, a yearly occurrence to update it to a current uh, Nixos version uh, with not necessarily too much activity in between. But um, the, the main idea of Static Haskell Nix is it's currently outside of Nix packages just to ease maintenance burden on the main project on Nix packages itself. And uh, what it does is it basically tells all of the C libraries that they should build .a files, which are required for static linking. And it also overrides various Haskell packages that have some kind of problem being statically linked. So that's basically just a big file where for every package that makes some problem, we define the corresponding overrides, maybe find some patches that need to, have, uh, need to be added and so on. And then at the very end, um, we just tell GHC, okay, now do the static link. And given that it has all of these dependencies with .a files available, that then works eventually. Uh, on the way with this project, there is the usual workflow is that you try something out first in static has, has Linux to make it work, and then you submit a patch to Cabal or to Nix packages itself or to GHC in the past as well, so that uh, static linking works well. That's the rough summary. Thanks. Um, and so uh, something that we want to have is, first of all, better documentation for how to do this with uh, Bazel and Nix. Um, and um, uh, yeah, in that context, Jonathan and Niklas worked on updating uh, static Haskell Nix. Um, and I took a binary project that we have that was previously uh, built dynamically and uh, updated it to use the static uh, Haskell Nix uh, stuff. And I can do a, a very quick demo of this. Okay, so this just, uh, Bazel built this uh, binary, and now if I ask what kind of file this is, we see that this is a statically linked uh, binary. So 
So from a project perspective, this now means that there are now actual companies that actually depend on actual static linking working well, which is nice, because uh, that also means that the rest of the community probably gets a little bit faster access to doing that if they want to do some projects, for example, for shipping your own projects or getting it to users and so on. And uh, then we also had uh, at our session a couple of other general improvements for it. So we started adding documentation. Wow, that's a new thing. Uh, so it explains a little bit of what exactly do we do there, how does static linking work, and how do we get there concretely. And that's nice because we want to have a couple more regular contributors to keep everything up to date with the eventual goal to move it into Nix packages. And at that point, it should probably be easy enough for anybody to understand what's going on so that fixes can be done. Um, we also fixed a couple of bugs that prevented uh, the uh, Bazel builds to work. We did uh, yeah, upgrade to the latest uh, Nixos release. Um, and we also learned a couple new things. So you may know that um, when GHCI itself runs like template Haskell, it has to load code that was compiled in other Haskell modules. So you kind of build Haskell and then you load it directly in another module afterwards. And you can do that with normal shared object files or archive files. And we together as a team kind of learned, okay, how exactly does that work and which one is better in which situation and so on. So a bit of knowledge was gained. Uh, we made a compatibility thus with the GHC 9.2 and 9.6. And we found that 9.6 specifically fixes a very nasty case where uh, template Haskell evaluation would just crash. So that's nice as well. And um, then finally, we also did a little bit of testing of this approach of building stuff and the approach that Nix package itself has, which is using cross compilation from and to the same architecture, for example, cross compiling um, from x86 to x86, just to change the libc and just compare how well that works. Because usually cross compilation is more difficult than changing just the libc. And we found that it actually works quite well. So maybe a bit of a follow up task would be to see can the cross compile toolchain build everything that uh, static Haskell Nix can build right now, or are there remaining gaps that remain to be uh, closed in uh, Nix packages? So that's uh, the rough summary. Thanks. And of course, if you're interested in uh, static executables, you can just contact any of us and we will likely be able to help you with your project. There was a question. Good question. <laughs> that big. <laughs> Uh, let's do the Haskell Katas next. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, little presentation. Uh, this is a free software uh, operation system. It's called uh, Trisco. It's 100% uh, free software. And um, um, Haskell Kata is, uh, well, uh, thank, uh, thanks, thank you for your uh, for your help, because a lot of people uh, uh, know how uh, Haskell Kata work. This is the the directories of the the, the usage. Uh, let's start with this. Uh, um, it's already set up, so 
that's the the aspect of the of the program. Uh, it's interesting because uh, you have um, you have uh, yes uh, an, an editor uh, with two interesting um, features. Uh, it, uh, you compile uh, against uh, every, uh, you compile again test uh, all the time. Okay, uh, and. Uh, this is your uh, first, your, uh, when you uh, um, put your, <laughs> compose your solution on, and train your, the, and train the, the katas, okay? This is, uh, it's not, partos? <laughs> no, this is not, this is not, okay, this, it's here. Wait a minute. Maybe I close it. Very strange. Okay. Well, um, the idea uh, is uh, you uh, train uh, a lot of uh, mm, a lot of uh, solutions uh, very easily, very fast, uh, because it's uh, like katas. Uh, the idea is to to uh, improve by uh, repetition, but by, by, uh, by using uh, uh, catification, uh, idea is you copy uh, some software, some solution. Maybe we can see uh, one solution. Maybe you copy a solution, maybe this one. Okay, very simple. Copy and paste. Oh, no, sorry. Paste into the into here. Yep. Obviously, this compiles because it's a solution. Okay, compiles, and then you need to uh, catafify this. Code. The idea is to make uh, this code more uh, artistic uh, in some way. Maybe this is good enough, okay? Uh, because one line for the well, maybe this a you can do whatever you are interested in. Uh, the idea is do and uh, uh, this do something and. You can make uh, fast e experiments because it's easy to recompile, only save. Uh, you can see what uh, is the, what your ch changes, and then you uh, in this in this case you are in in phase a in step three. So you only have two, uh, one, two in this case three, and uh, you need uh, you uh, you put a commit message. Maybe uh, this is a some kind of section, some, well, section, okay. Uh, and uh, you commit your code, and then you will get another, uh, another code um, here. Yes, and uh, do this again, do this again, do this again, and the idea is to, um, to, pro to provide a simple way to um, try different uh, strategies uh, to uh, using Haskell, okay? Different strategies to use it to using Haskell uh, and learn by uh, only using your your eyes. Right? No no documentation, only uh, vi only visual uh, ideas, etc. And that's uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for your help because I I catch uh, some uh, curious problems with the with the um, with bugs uh, with the problem because. Uh, okay, minus help, help, okay, uh, one problem is um, uh, I, for, I forget, uh, I forgot to uh, uh, show the, the um, instructions, uh, it, uh, when you show, when you show, here uh, you can get the instructions all, uh, 
uh, using minus zero. And by by some strange uh, incident, I <laughs> I forgot uh, um, this. And well, that's that's the aspect is very fast to set up the uh, uh, akata. You uh, translate a very very fast akata from Code Wars uh, into your local uh, laptop, and you can uh, work on this very fast. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we can do Hlint next. If, yeah. I don't have anything to show on the screen, but I'm happy to report that uh, we've had in the past few days uh, three new Hlint contributors, and um, uh, we should have a few more very soon. So during Zurich Hack, we had, um, I think we had nine PRs open, and uh, uh, six of them were merged. And uh, um, among the nine PRs, three of them were made by Thomas, and another three made by, um, by Igor, and uh, one by another Thomas, one by Niklas, and one by uh, Jens Peterson. And I think there's, uh, there's at least two more PRs coming up soon. Uh, and on top of all that, I've also heard a few other people express uh, interest in contributing. So I just want to shout out to all of them. Uh, very well done, and uh, your contributions are deeply appreciated. Um, and HLint, like I said on the first day, it um, hasn't, hasn't been getting a lot of maintenance in the past few months. I mean, there are a few uh, maintainers, but um, none of them seem to, be, to have enough time to maintain it properly. So like, if you're interested in helping, that would be wonderful. Um, and I mean, it's uh, especially if you're someone who is looking to get started uh, on some Haskell open source projects, I think it is a very good one to start with. Uh, it's also very good to, familiar to get familiarized with some part of the GHC API, if, like if you're interested in contributing to GHC itself at some point. Um, so yeah, that's it, thank you. Thank you, maybe we can do HLS next. So, hello. Uh, quickly, uh, any, er, everyone who contributed to HLS this weekend, can they please also come on stage so we can all see the many, many contributors we had? Oh, I think some are not, yeah. This is new never. <laughs> so, now we are eight. I cannot count, anyway, either way. Um, so these are still not everyone. I, at least once I counted at least 12 different contributors. I think we were at around 15 to 20, which is a huge success and we had so many contributions. As you can see here, we have nine uh, pull requests that are currently in the, uh, in the merge loop, so merge pipeline. So hopefully we will have nine merge PRs by the end of next week. Additionally, we merged in the last couple of days six more uh, merge requests. And I would like to briefly like, um, pass around now the mic and let everyone tell, tell us what they have been working, about, working on the last couple of days. Uh, I fixed some bugs in the LSP library and I was working on trying to make the logging event nicer. Um, if you've ever considered writing uh, a plugin for HLS, uh, you might have noticed that the tutorial is very outdated, so I rewrote it. Uh, I added a code action uh, for ad importing record fields when you forget to import them and you're using them with overload record dot. Uh, if you've noticed, uh, HLS keeps telling you to add pragmas everywhere uh, whenever you're doing completions. So I've just made it more, more precise, not completely precise. So it won't be telling you to add completions to like imports or whenever you're trying to find what exists in data dot maybe or something, whatever, uh, whatever module. So less noise. I finished up a pre-existing pull request which fixed a bug where the language server would not 
report the correct version of a document it was editing with the effect that a spec abiding editor like Helix would not apply code actions, uh, which it does now. So, further, we had a number of other bugs fixed. We improved the multiple home units component support, which will be landing next, hopefully very soon, if Suwin finishes it. And now we want to show you a bit of the future, which is an, a Kabel for the, uh, which is a HLS plugin for the Kabel file, which uh, our Haskell Sum of Code student is currently writing on, and she will present it now. So, um, I'm... Can you just hold yeah. the mic? Okay, so I already started working on this last Siri hack, and also Rune, who went swimming also started working on it. So last year we had diagnostics for Cabal files and also uh, support for Cabal format, file formatting. And I'm currently working on completion. So we have license completion now for the uh, license field. We have co completion for files, like file paths. Well, yeah, and we have uh, completion for uh, directories as well, so that's just slightly different. It oh, doesn't work here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm working on more completion for different kinds of uh, values, and also um, I want to add snippet completion, so if you start like typing, for example, in the library stance so that it will complete like some fields that you need anyways, Thank you very much. Um, maybe we can have Boss talk about Wasm if Boss is still around. Oh. Do you have your USB-C here? Um, no. Okay. Then. Uh... And we'll just briefly explain. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a quick demo prepared about Wasm time. I'm um, just going to quickly uh, tell again what it's about. So um, uh, me and a colleague of mine, Michael Weigelt, wrote a Haskell binding to Wasm time. And Wasm time is a WebAssembly engine. So WebAssembly is a binary form, kind of a Web assembly based format for running programs in your browser very efficiently. These days also use more and more on the back end like, for example, on the internet computer blockchain uh, for running smart contracts. Um, and um, with this um, WasmTime uh, binding, you can now actually call WasmTime from Haskell. So you can load in uh, WebAssembly programs, initialize the engine, uh, create a store for storing functions and memory objects and V tables and globals, and then you can actually invoke Wasm functions uh, from uh, from that module and and run them. Uh, and then the module can also call back into Haskell uh, if, if it Im imports functions. And yeah, uh, if you have an interest in Wasm and want to integrate it in your projects, please use that library. Uh, I also discovered that Shang Xiao also was working on a Wasm time um, binding. So hopefully we can work together to kind of integrate our both uh, libraries. Thank you. Um, let's do EQ set. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a long conference. <laughs> yes, yes, it has. <laughs> um, hi, so I would just like to say that I, during these three days, I was able to explain to a lot of people what a quality saturation was and e graphs and how they worked and what I was doing with them. And uh, is Nadia here? Um, I don't see her necessarily. So, Nadia implement, extended the test, the test suite for my equality saturation slash equality graphs library which uh, the test suite is, is um, a symbolic rewriting library. So you say it's something like symbolic Python, uh, SymPy, right? And she has extended the test suite with support for rewriting Jacobi elliptic identities. I hope I got that right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was very, 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 very cool to see that happening. Um, so it, if I'll be still here. Uh, if anyone likes to, would like to discuss equality situation or learn about it, I will be um, happy to talk to you. Long 
Okay, so can we use your laptop? I guess that's easier. Do we have 12 people that can open a laptop now and, uh, and use it? Otherwise, this is not going to work. Uh, yes. At least seven or eight and possibly 12. It's an audience participation thing. So if you've come here for a long time, we sometimes try to do these things. And uh, what we've done is that um, we try to come up with little games that we can play together. And I think we've come up with a puzzle game that works, played individually. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, we'll see how it works while we're all playing it. So you need to go on tinyurl.com slash Zuri23. And we should be, OK, right. That's already good. I mean, keep joining. So, um, OK, so the way it works, let's not start it yet. So the way this puzzle game works is this. There is that goal. We want to produce a Haskell expression that computes that goal. So in this case, that's a list from 0 to 4. OK? So yeah, he's playing, but I think that's fine. Yeah. So in this case, this is sort of a warm-up level. This should be pretty easy. But the tokens are predefined, but the output is fixed. Does that make some sort of sense? Yes? Now, the twist here is that each person will control a different token. OK? So when we start, uh, if it says you're playing on your screen, you will be able to move the token. And so we expect some emergent behavior whereby the correct expression lines up. And you can see, maybe if you can increase the font slightly on, 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 on the display laptop. Here is what we currently have. Um, yeah, so this is sort of a GCI prompt with what it's been currently been composed. And when it works, it will work, yes, David? Just move your mouse cursor, but it doesn't start it. Well, you, it will move the token. <laughs> okay, so maybe let's try to start. This is my, yeah, all right, so, yeah. All right, so, this is a five element list. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who, why, what's going on? <laughs> what? Who's zero? Who's zero? Zero to the right, to the right. Z oh, more. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zero, 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 zero. Move, move back to the right, zero. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So this is the game, okay? <laughs> okay, good. So it gets a bit harder. I hope, if we get to three or four levels, that's already very good. So now you need to make 32 with these tokens. Uh, so maybe we want to. Yeah, let's maybe look at it for 30 seconds. I want you to focus on join here. Join is the key to this level. Um, so yeah. It's one of the what? So does anybody have a clue on how to do this? Yes? Yes. It's highlighted when the level starts. It's only like eight players in this. Yeah, it's only eight players, and the, the, you might not be playing right now. But hopefully, it's 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 clear when we start playing. But um, okay, maybe we should start this one. Uh, then I'll give you. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Now five had the right clue at the beginning, actually. Yeah, yeah. So what's thirty-two? Two to the yes. Yes, so we want to extract the fifth element of a list that contains what? Yes. How can we make powers of two for two? Yeah, okay. Who's iterate? <laughs> okay, 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 good, good. Well, well, yeah. Yes, to the left, iterate to the left, please. <laughs> Okay, no, no, just, just, just leave it to the left. I think that's, no, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, stop. All right, we, 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 we're we so close. There is a type error here. What does join, yeah, 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 that's it. Okay, why does this work? Does anybody know why this works? You. So what does join plus do? Correct. Okay, on to the next level. This is going very well. Now, the goal for this is E, the mathematical constant E. 
Um, so this one is a bit harder, <laughs> but not super hard. And there isn't much of a choice on how to place this. So um, the quirk with this one is suck. Um, and that there is a bit of maths apart from this. Um, so maybe again, yeah, let's, let's pause for a few seconds. Oh, you started already. Okay, well, I mean. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so suck, well, does, well, I don't know what kind of hint to give, apart from telling the solution, but... <laughs> Yeah. Excuse me? Well, but whoever is, whoever is uh, piloting Sam is wrong. Uh, suck is the last thing to do. Scannel 1 is like, okay, scan is like fold, but you keep all the intermediate results as you're folding to the list. So that's what scan does. Scannel 1 just uses the first element of the list as the base case. Mm, yeah, okay, 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 we, 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 you know, suck, sum is good. We're, we're basically just missing the, 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 the dollar, the dollar, the dollar to the left. No, no. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, this is, this is as precise as E can get uh, with floating point numbers, by the way. Um, I'll leave you to figure out how this works. Um, well, it's over. I think once you won, you can't move them. But you can see it here. So this is some compressed series expansion sum. But um, I don't know if we should do the next level. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, here the goal is eight. Um, but you will notice that there aren't enough times to make eight. And you have to use everything. And you have to use everything. But yeah, I mean, okay, I mean, let's try to start. I don't know exactly. <laughs> Yeah, does anybody? And if you knew this, I've play tested this with some people, so those people should not speak. But maybe let's, let's see if one person can get the main trick with this one. Well, okay. <laughs> Well, but you have one equal. You can't define two things. Huh? You do not have n plus k patterns. Uh, they don't work anymore. Otherwise, I would have we would have included them in, the, in this. Okay. Well, wait, wait, wait. What did you just say? You're close, but that will not work. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay, maybe we can start. The start of this thing is let A plus B equals something. <laughs> A plus B equals... <laughs> the two, the, no, the, the two, two of the twos are stuck together. Um, okay. Yes, yes. Let's redefine plus to mean times. <laughs> and then we just use plus, which now means times, to make eight. So, okay, who's the second A, the one in the middle? Yeah, okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah okay. Now in, who's in? Oh, God. Does anybody have in? Did it get stuck somehow? Oh, there it is. Okay, 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 okay. We're almost there, we're almost there. So A times V, A times Z. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in, in to the right of B. You're busily done. Yeah, but where, where is uh, the guy with in? In needs to be to the right of B. Yes, 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 yes. And then the, no, no, the A was good. <laughs> no, no, don't do this. The, the two, yeah, 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 yes. No. 
who was that? Okay, there you go. Okay, good. Last one. <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. The goal here is to make the string thin. It's the last, it's the last exercise. We, only, you know, we have zero, one, two, and three. And then we have a few dollars, yes? Well, I don't know if that works really well, though. Uh, I, yeah? We, should we, we, yeah, okay. So, how can we... Wait, do we want to start immediately or do we want to do... Okay, okay. How can we, how can we build thin with these ingredients? Yes, you're very good. Okay, well, what, what, what shall we... So, why does that work? Why does that work? Maybe somebody else. Yes, we want to get inf. <laughs> but, I mean, but we're, we, we, we have a... We can't, what do we need to divide? Well, maybe we should start now, so, yeah. <laughs> Thin as three letters for those who can't count. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Somebody's very cautious. <laughs> Where has take? Doesn't want to take any risks. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're close, we're close, we're close. Who's one? Who's one? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. No, who's why are you doing this? Whoever you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One divided by zero is missing. Congratulations. Good job. That's all. And uh, this was done by me, UC, Alex, Jasper. Who else helped? Playtested by, Play by many people. Sure. On paper. No, no, no. This is the first time we show with the computerized version. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks for the project presentations. Uh, that was pretty fun. Um, I think we're going to give a few closing remarks now. Uh, so just give us one minute to set up. Oh, sorry. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Okay, one more project presentation, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is my computer here. Thank you. No computer. Broken. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let's go. You, you, do you want to say something? Or? No, it's, uh, we'll do it at the end. Okay. So, uh, it's, uh, I will present you the Gargantex project. So, we have been thinking about uh, how to make uh, an ecosystem-based decision. And uh, maybe it could be using tools such like uh, knowledge map, collaborative knowledge map. So, here is an, it's an, a hypothesis to work on if my computer wants to start up. And uh, it's fully written in Haskell. So I'm using so many libraries, so I would like to thank you. And it's like an experiment, and I'm opening a discussion. And uh, 
I hope you will enjoy as much as I have enjoyed this event. Sorry for the delay. I made everything to be prepared. Okay. So you will see everything. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so, so the back end is in Haskell. I'm starting it. We are using it next. And uh, okay, here we go. So what is Gargantext? Uh, Gargantext is a giant um, invented in the Middle Age. So he, that's that guy here, you can see here. So you have some words here, and he's digesting it to make some graph. And uh, this project is funded first by the French research agency, also called so CNRS is an encrypted name. And uh, I would like to thank Andres from WellTyped for inviting me, I think, because uh, first of all, I was refused and uh, maybe I could not present it. So I'm very happy to, to thank you and to congratulate uh, all the amazing people who have shared their ID and especially uh, Christian, who installed his first uh, local Gargant text on his own machine, so you successfully passed the first challenge. So here, we, to install the bin binary. So here, I can uh, work on my own machine. And uh, if you receive an invitation, just click on the dev instance. For to, we will try to build the community ask our community on this instance, and we have some European project, uh, scientific communities too, so we are trying to find a business model and so on, so on, so on. So, here is the presentation, and uh, um, yes, so Gargantex is a real project, real world project. Um, so when I started seven years ago, I was not really sure that uh, Haskell was a good choice. And today I can say that yes, every day is a joy to work with Haskell. So um, it's uh, developed to an amazing team. I'm not alone. And I would like to thank you in Paris too uh, with uh, the um, Complex Institute of uh, Complex Science Institute. So what is a collaborative map? A collaborative, explain me like I'm five, okay? Here you have the little prince Map. Okay, you know the book? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Okay, well, explain me like I'm five. I, we could have some other examples. So here it's in French, but the hypothesis behind this that it could work for any language. So you have the equivalent structure, the semantic equivalent structure, structure. So you can see here who the little prince has a question here. He's asking the adults about the knowledge with his floral and uh, nothing can be seen with the eyes. So here you can map the knowledge and uh, how we could do that on the Haskell community. That's the point of this project. So we have uh, a game, a challenge for the beginner here, for the intermediate level and for the expert. So the beginners, uh, do you remember maybe at the beginning you have so many documentations about Haskell? So how to have a compass where to know where I have to learn and so on. So uh, we made a, a, dat a data set of all the publications from archive and we get that graph. So here is a monad 
graph. So we cluster all the words, and you can see the monad graph. This one? Yeah? Here we are. No? What's happening? <laughs> so if we zoom in, uh, here you have the monad. Here you have Haskell implementation, functional programs. So to another cluster. You're just, you can see the topics mainly. OK, here we have the strong monads. Here we have the selection monad. Here we have the monadic data flow parallelism, the module monad, monadic expression. And we can add more. And here it's algorithmic laziness. OK, so. Yeah. What do the edges mean and what do the colors mean? The colors mean the main topic, the clustering. The monad. If you are inside the cluster and you make a random walk, the probability to stay inside the cluster is very high. OK? So but basically, how it is done, uh, you, are, we, we, you will have access. If you invite you, yeah. The edges, it's the probability to have the same, the other words in the same context. So the, the context is here. You can see it, and I added the annotation. So the green words are the ones uh, which are inside the graph. So, and you can make it collaboratively. That's the point. Um, if you invite yourself, you can put here your email, so you will get all that file. And inside this file, you will see the text flow. It's all the pipelines written in Haskell. So basically, Gargantex is a function taking as input some text of any language from any database. You could be up here, you could search on the web. And you get a visualization automatically. That's the pipeline. But the user has to control. The first specification is no black box allowed. That's why I've chosen first the expressive, expressiveness and the, of the syntax of Haskell, which is very nice to read when you are not a programmer language uh, developer, because I'm sociologist first. So here is all the pipeline. So you have so many functions, so three families of functions, the docker on the documents, so we clean it, on the words, and the visualization. And Christian, please, come. <laughs> Come, you are entered, you have been on the left. So, Christian is here, and today we merged your pull request in the code base. And uh, you did the import of the GitLab issues. Yeah. yeah so, we basically took the GitLab issues of GHC and uh, import them into a format that uh, Gargon text can interpret. Thank you, Brian, for the data. And then uh, he used the Aizen library, and uh, I could not explain, it's, we have not the time to explain all the process, but uh, you can see why the types are useful when you branch so many functions, and you can branch here or connect here another language if you want to. So here you have the text. So do you remember the map here, knowledge, flower, OK? So on the left here, or it could be if you are left-handed, it could be on the right, OK? I bet that the next Leonardo da Vinci could be in this community. So it could be left-handed or right-handed. I'm right-handed, so I'm taking the flower in the tree of knowledge like this. And then the flora, the flora is here, OK? And you click on it, and you have the objects and the, the methods of each node. And uh, here the tree, the forest, exactly, because you can connect to many instances. The forest here, you have the database schema here, too. And you can see the flower around the nodes, OK? So next point, next, is if I have the time, it's the who is who challenge for intermediate. What is the new is who challenge? Uh, the point is, um, I have extracted, imported all the publication of famous authors of the community inside. So, how 
which one to choose and to show you. Uh, usually, in an identity-based community or ecosystem, we vote. We make an election. Okay? Or we could vote right now. Which one? You have six persons. Okay? And uh, the idea is, if you see the graph, the equivalent social equivalent stru structure of the graph, you could guess who has written on the paper. Okay, let's, let's play to this, this game. Okay, so how we choose, collectively choose, which one of this, I could not say, so you, you get the fist up, and you choose a number between six and one. It will be very hard to compute and to select. Okay, so this method to vote together is very hard. The next one could be we select the authors with some variables. Whoa, we could, we could text the one with the most or the least number of documentation, of publication, or the author who published the uh, alone, or with the more co-authors, and so on and so on, or the diversification of the words. But here, I think that we need, um, we need a random monad. Okay? Do you have a random monad? Do you have a, someone has a random monad or not? Yes? yes. We trust. Oh, okay. Are you asking for a monad? Yeah, I'm asking, yeah. Okay, I'm going inside the graph, I'm going a monad. I'm taking a random monad, it's a dice. It's a dice with 120 faces. Okay, let's see this. Okay, so how do we model these dice? Here we have the number of faces, okay? And we take the modulus, okay? Do you agree with this method? I don't understand. <laughs> so I launch the dice, and Christian, you tell me which one face you got from the community-based knowledge graph validated by each member of the ecosystem? 17. 17, okay, so we say seven mod, 17, uh, yes, six, okay, five, okay, five, who is the number five? Here we got the graph, who is it? Oh, it's a big one, we have to specialize it. Okay, there are many words. Please, 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 go, 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 go. Here, it's GPU. I need some GPU, go. Here we have something appearing, so you see the clusters. I stop and I increase the, ro increase the word, and if you have a guess, you can say a name of someone you know, probably. Okay, programming, does it help? Okay, stop, here we are, and uh, we have functor, category three, uh, argument, asking implementation, some type, neutral element, what is it? Morphism, who is it? Who is it? No, you don't know? Uh, category three? Bart oh, is it Bartos? Who vote, vote for Bartos? Do you have another guess? Uh, okay, uh, for this one, who is agree with Con? 
we'll see maybe the graph. So, to, so you, can, you can test by yourself, so you go inside the terms, and here you are the author. Oh, yes, it's Bartos. <laughs> And you could, we could uh, choose another one. Again, we, we, we have the time or not? No, we don't have the time. OK. And uh, for the GitLab issues, it will be for next year, uh, because we can map all the GitLab issues of the GAC core. And uh, it's very, yeah, I think it's powerful to coordinate each other according to the words we are choosing. So we will, be see, we will see that next year. Thank you for everything. <laughs>